Shalom, brothers and sisters. All honor, glory, and praise goes to the Most High Yahweh in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. Brothers and sisters, this is an update, and I'm going to also uh, correct an error I made and tell you about an accomplishment. Then I'm going to go over two other topics about wisdom and about the 400 years. So y'all hold tight. Hang on. So, I know y'all want to know how my purge out is going. It's going well. Though it has some moments of realization, I got some work to do. And also have its moments where I've completed some, uh, some things I needed to complete and accomplish. So, brothers and sisters, I got a little ways to go. Before I come back entirely uh, on here to share things with you. But uh, I pray that y'all just bear with me, you know. No matter how long it takes. Long suffer with me as the Most High long suffer with you. As he took his time and waited on you. What's the difference? If we're all in the same body, you should do the same what he done for you, to your brothers and sisters. Now, um, concerning my error I made, and it's dealing with fasting. And I know a lot of you came across different things on YouTube and on uh, Google about fasting. And so have I. I come across those same things. And... And our ideas of fasting sometimes doesn't line up with what's actually written in scriptures. So to clear up the confusion where I was crossing fasting with vows. And now that I got an understanding of what a vow is and what fasting is, I can correctly uh, tell you what I was doing all this time. Most of it was vows rather than fasting. It's because I blended the two, uh, created the confusion. But now the correction is here. So the correct way to do a fast is as the scriptures say, without water, without food, for a time. That's pure fasting. Anything else is considered a vow. If you add water to that, now correct me if I'm wrong on the water thing. If you add water, just water, let's say you drunk water for the next three days. According to a pure fast, that wouldn't be a fast. That would be more like a vow. Something that's being told to you or you bringing it before the Most High and doing something like a 21-day fruit and vegetable vow. And I took that as a fast. So y'all see the confusion there? Uh, it wasn't intentional. It was just misunderstanding. But confusion is confusion. That's not of the Most High. He's not of confusion. So either man confuses you or it's uh, the evil one. But with a lack of understanding in certain things, that could happen. We'll be vulnerable to things like that. So when in my past videos where I was saying um, you can do fasting from YouTube, fasting from um, certain foods, uh, that wasn't correct. Now, if you want to do a vow where you're giving up something you like for a period of time for a result, or whatever the case may be, that's different. That's something you're bringing before him, and you're saying, hey, Father, this is what I'm going to do for X amount of days or, or time for this type of result. So that's a vow. But fasting is one thing. It's no food, no water. From my understanding, what I read, if I'm wrong about that, if fasting can be also water, Please show me the scriptures. 
show me the scriptures. But right here, I'm going to show you where Esdras was. See, Esdras did some fasting. And this is pure fast. This is no food and no water. He did that for 21 days. And the angel came and showed him. Uriel came and showed him different things. And gave him understanding and showed him prophecies and visions. And now, again, this angel saying, Nevertheless, if thou wilt cease yet seven days more, howbeit thou shalt not fast in them, but shalt go into the fields of flowers, where no house is built, and eat only the flowers of the field. And thou shalt taste no flesh, and shalt drink no wine, but shalt eat flowers only, and bring unto the Most High continually. Then will I come and talk with thee. So he was going to reveal something else to him if he did this thing that the Most High told him to do, which is go in the field and eat these flowers. And I tied that in with fasting when it's telling you right here, this ain't fasting. Y'all see what I'm saying? I pray y'all forgive me on that error. I've made errors in the past. If y'all see me make any errors, y'all correct me. A sister corrected me about a video I put out with the Sons of Light where they were smoking in there. Smoking some... Who knows what they were smoking? Could have been a cigar. Could have been a cigarette. It didn't look like a cigarette. It looked more like a like a cigar. It could have been a sweet. Who knows? But she brought that to my attention. That you don't know what they're smoking. They shouldn't be smoking. And I said you was right. And I took the video down. I haven't posted it back without the video to this day. And she was right. I'm putting away that video. I don't know how that slipped past me, but it did. Sometimes things do happen like that where it slipped past me for whatever reason. But, brothers and sisters, that's the correction that I had to make about fasting and vows. You can look up vows in uh, Leviticus and go study that. And you can come back to um, Second Ezra and read about his fasting starting with, um, you can go to chapter, chapter 5. And you'll pick up on his second fast. And chapter 6 talks about his third fast. And, um, and then chapter 9 talks about this vow, this commandment vow given from the Most High, where he was to only eat flowers in a field for seven days. And um, as an example, if you drop down to 38... Where he started having a vision where he saw this woman and she mourned and wept with a loud voice and her clothes was rent and she was talking about she lost her child. Now in the vision it turned out that um she was actually Zion and her child was Jerusalem I may have that backwards <laughs> but at the end of the vision Uriel came and spoke with him let's see that's a 20 verse 28 Where he said he was afraid and cried with a loud voice and said, Where is Uriel the angel who came unto me at the first? And then that's when Uriel came and explained to him what was going on, what, what that vision was all about. So go and check that out, brothers and sisters. Um, I'm not no, I'm not so high minded and pride filled that I can't be corrected and that I can't correct. Uh, expose myself when I make an error or when I mess up or something 
Mm-hmm. We are all going through through this awakening, so y'all can have mercy or not. It's on y'all. But on to my accomplishment. My accomplishment deals with this same subject where I finally um, fulfilled a full 24 hours even with my condition with without eating anything. And I drank water and I drank some um, unsweetened herbal tea. And I didn't really drink a lot of that. Uh, for four twenty-four hours, y'all. Hallelujah. That's the first time I went that long without eating anything. Like for four twenty-four hours, uh, with this, the, you know, with the condition I'm in, which means I'm I'm getting better. And I had to call upon the Most High when I start getting a little shakes. When I approached that hour, when I got up to like 18 hours, and I got to sh- shaking a little bit, and I just kept the faith, and I just cried out to him and said, Father, I'm going to make it. I need your help to get through this. And he came through for me. Next thing you know, I was calm, and I was, okay, and I said, all right, I'm going to make it. It's good. Made it all the way up to 25 hours, and I was going to keep going, but I said, no, I ain't going to push myself. I did this, and uh, that's the vow I made for 24 hours. I'm going to commit to that. <laughs> Let me cut it off now, and I'll extend it later on. But that's my accomplishment, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Now, let's get to wisdom. I just want to go over a few things about wisdom, y'all. This is Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am and none else beside me. So for all those who still believe in wisdom is the Holy Spirit and female and calling the Holy Spirit her, right? You're telling me that wisdom, the wisdom that they are trusting in is wicked, and the, their wisdom is perverting them? Let me read it again. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. Y'all mean, thy Holy Spirit hath perverted them? The Most High's Holy Spirit that was in this wicked thing led them into pervertedness and wickedness? Do y'all see the Baphomet spirit clear and present that I've been warning about? If you're still sub to these people, you're lost, you're gone. And if you still want to believe in this doctrine, have at it. Now let me go to one more scriptures in 1 Corinthians. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 16 through 18 and it reads, And I baptize also the household of Stephanas besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. For Christ, for Hamashiach sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, least the cross of Hamashiach shall be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of Yahweh. Uh, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I said 16 through 18, I meant. I think I was meaning 18 through 20, but that's all right. Let's continue reading. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Wait a minute. The Most High is going to destroy His own Holy Spirit? His beautiful, lovely, female 
spirit? Why would the Most High want to destroy his woman, his mo this mother of heaven, this mother earth, this female, Gaia, mother nature? It's all connected, y'all. The doctrines that they've fallen for and getting you to fall for, it's all connected to this Baphomet transgender spirit that then went out in our awakening and has corrupted minds, hearts, and souls of the wicked children of Zion and taken them into the lake of fire. Many of them are going to go. And you keep subbing to these same people and going back to them and hearing what thus say of whoever is speaking through them, you will get what you want to get. Oh, uh, a, a ticket to pain land. Where the pain never ceases. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not y'all made foolish the wisdom of this world? There's the separation. Now can you understand from one of my past videos where I was trying to tell you there is such a thing as using wisdom for good and evil? Some people use wisdom for evil. You cannot put the Holy Spirit in that category. The Holy Spirit of the Most High is pure. Have not Yah made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of Yah, the world by wisdom knew not Yah. Wait, wait a minute. The world by the Holy Spirit knew not the Most High. If you put it in that belief context, like they're telling you, you mean the female Pure spirit and mo wait a minute, hold up. Let's read that again. For after that, in the wisdom of Yah, the world by wisdom knew not Yah. This is impossible statement to connect the Holy Spirit right here. It pleased Yah by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believed. Boy, where is Second Thessalonians when I need you. Come on, Second Thessalonians. Where you at? Two and what? We're going to start with seven. Where, where you at, man? There we go. Oh, wait a minute. Is this first Corinth? This Colossians. <laughs> Oh, I'm tripping. I'm freaking out. I went the wrong way. <laughs> That's all right. Let's keep going right here. This is what we want. For the mystery of equity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom Yahweh shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Hashatan. With all power, signs, and line wonders, it's after Hashatan, the working of Hashatan. With all power, he has power and signs. He has signs too, and lying wonders, and with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Y'all see, these are the wicked Hebrews believing in these doctrines. With all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish. It's because it's in them to perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth. When they hear this truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, Yah shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. The Holy Spirit is female. Is Mother Earth. Wisdom is the Mother of Heaven. Y'all have no idea the, how many people is lying to you like this. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 
and they take pleasure in knowing this. Y'all know that? They're so happy. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Evangelist Man on YouTube. Thank you, Evangelist Woman on YouTube for, for preaching. I never heard this, but I thank you. I love it. I love it. They have pleasure in unrighteousness. They have pleasure in this wicked wickedness, y'all. Pleasure. I mean, my goodness, man. Where you at, First Corinthians? They take pleasure in this, y'all. Can y'all believe that? I can, because I see it. And I keep having to go over the same subject. Because y'all, some of you not leaving these people. It's because maybe your brain then got fried with the doctrine and you can't receive even this. And you know what some people are going to say? Oh, Paul, he's a false apostle anyway. Why are you using his letters? Well, I just went to um, Isaiah and in the other videos as well. I went to other scriptures. I don't even have to go into Wisdom of Solomon. Even though I could, I got the pocket for right here. I've already did a video about why they calling wisdom her. What's the purpose and meaning behind it? All I've been doing is doing additional add additions to bring up some more understanding. For things that you may not have even thought of. But if you're meant to be destroyed, you won't let go of these people. You're going to continue to receive more wicked things from them. And especially the ones that are selling the word to you. Whether they put together a book explaining the one of the books of the Bible or end time Bible prophecy and selling it to you. You're not going to let them go. Whether they're making trinkets and gadgets to sell to you or t-shirts in their ministries, you're not going to let them go. You're going to make excuses like they're making excuses to sell the word. You're going to make excuses to buy it and support them. You know why? Because you take pleasure in unrighteousness. You take pleasure in it. And then when someone real comes along and is like, Hey, can y'all help me in there? You do nothing for them, but you go over there and you support the Wizard of Oz. Who's not only selling t-shirts to you, they selling jewelry to you. That they make at home in their ministries, they I could see if it was jewelry and t-shirts being sold outside of the ministry, but it's in it. It's involved with the ministry. Some of them selling lessons to you on DVD and CD. You don't see a thing wrong with it. The Most High has turned you over to a great delusion because you take pleasure in unrighteousness. You used to what those Christian pastors was doing. Selling you CDs and selling you books. So you come into the Hebrew awakening loving it even more. Because your awakened Hebrew is doing it. So you taking much pleasure in the perishing and the destruction of your people. No joke brothers and sisters. There's a lot of deception in this awakening. You got men and women, individuals and husband and wife teams doing these very sad things. You best believe they're teaching you lies and deception. I'm being purged out, brothers and sisters. I'm going to shut down all my videos. And uh, I'm going to go over every last one for errors. And every last one I do make an error, I will report it. And if you saw that I made an error, you send it to me. You better say something. Don't sit there with your mouth closed. Send it to me. Let me know what video, where was it? What, where did you see the mistake? Whatever it was. Don't hold back. Do you want me to go in a lake of fire? I'd rather you say something than hold your tongue. Whether it be through you or the most I open my eyes to myself, it will get done. If you see that you're going to hold back on me and not tell me my transgression, he's going to show me or send somebody else in your place.
All right, brothers and sisters, let's get into this 400 year. We've seen August 21st come and go, just as we knew it would. Well, some of us. I knew it would because I don't believe in date setting. I don't believe in date setting. Do y'all hear what I'm saying here? And I messed up when I went about to prove that 1619 to 2019 was false and was fake and you was being deceived. And because of my mess up, my, my beginning of it, I screwed up. The rest of the video was sound though. The rest of the video was sound. Because of that one mess up, people went off and called me all type of names and talking talk about I was the devil and speaking with a forked tongue and Tell me, oh man, I'm out of here, and all these other things. Now look at them. What are they doing now? They they fixing to get ready to backpedal with their pastors and their ministers that they subscribe to and put their heart in. They fix to hear all this backpedaling and excuses flowing when none of them is going to say, I apologize for the false prophecy I'm shutting down. Believe me, they lied to you about many other things too. Everyone that was into this 1619 to 2019 thing, holding meetings and parties and gatherings, and y'all still want to stay with them? You go right ahead, because I'm, I'm only here for the few. I'm not here for all of you. My channel has always been for the few if y'all haven't paid attention. There's not a lot of likes and comments and a lot of people that view. It's only a few. A small group. Of all the people I got on my channel that subscribe, just a few. The rest go toward where everybody else is. The the masses, they go gravitate toward where the masses are at. And most of the masses are doing these things that I've been telling you to uh to avoid. But anyway, back to this four hundred year prophecy thing. One of um. My subscribers made a good point, said that this country was established like 230 years ago. But whether or not this country was established, no one would know the day or hour when Hamashiach will return to gather the two sticks and put them together in his own hand. I tried to tell everybody that. There's no separation between this. But they wanted to stick with all the the masses. And the masses are going into destruction. They will be led into deception. They talked about that we would go free before the coming of Hamashiach. All the excuses flew. Now with what are they doing? Most of them are confused ready to get out of the awakening. There was no telling how many people fell when they was probably outside waiting to be redeemed. Waiting for Donald Trump to sign a letter saying, hey, y'all can go free. We got tickets for you. We're going to put all your, all your stuff on cargo ships and we're going to ship you by a, a, a cruise ship back to the west coast of Africa. And on the way, we're going to give each one of you a million dollars for reparations. Yay! Who knows how many people fail. But I'm going to show you script right here. What I showed you before in that video where I put myself to shame. Man. This is a key prophecy right here. And understanding how long our our desolation would be. Now this end of the video is going to get a little bit longer. So if y'all want to know something that's going to help you understand that you're not going to know the day and hours, stay tuned. Writer says, Come and let us return unto Yahweh, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. 
he has smitten, and he will bind us up. This goes right along with Genesis chapter <clears throat> Genesis chapter 30, where he says, um, I'm just going to go to the scriptures instead of scrolling with this. Genesis chapter 30, he says, Oh, I'm sorry. It was Deuteronomy chapter 30. <laughs> Man. <laughs> and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, neither, I mean, whether Yahweh have, thy Allah have driven thee. Now stop right there. He says, come and let us return unto Yahweh, for he have torn us, and he will heal us. So, we had the blessings come upon us, and the curses have come upon us. So, we've been torn, a new one, by the Most High. Now, he's in the process of healing us, Ezekiel 37. If you want to pause and go read Ezekiel 37, please do. This is the healing process in Ezekiel 37, is spoken of. He will, or he have smitten, and he will bind up, bind us up. Just a restating of what's taking place. After two days will he revive us. There goes Ezekiel 37. But wait a minute, what is this two day stuff? We have to go to Second Peter, which I'm going to right now. Let's see if I can get there without press and pause come on second Peter where you at Let's, come on come on come on oh yeah patience huh <laughs> let me press pause this is second Peter uh, three and eight here we go but, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. Now, this is the Most Highest Holy Spirit that put this together for me, brothers and sisters. A thousand years is just one day. Because when I read that, that thought popped up in my mind. And I went and found the scriptures. And I understood what he was telling me. So let's go back to Hosea. Okay, we're back at Hosea. After two days, two thousand years, will he revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up and we will live in his sight. So, at the coming of Hamashiach, we will be in the third day where he'll raise us up and put the two sticks together. Purge us out and we will live in his sight. Now, I'm not going to give no date on this. Because I'm not going to be responsible for no. Uh-uh. We don't know the day and hour. Brothers and sisters. So after 2,000 years. Why 2,000? Because the Gentiles is going to be punished for 1,000 years during the reign of Hamashiach. And the Mosa already declared that he would punish us double for our sins. Y'all remember that? He will punish us double. Google that yourselves. You look it up. You do this homework. He will punish us double for our sins. And if we go to the book of Daniel, it will bear witness to this as well. Let me see if I can get there real quick. Oops. Wait a minute, where am I? Isaiah? Okay. What well, we're going to discover here in the book of Daniel is the consummation of the wedding of the Lamb doesn't take place until after the desolation is complete. Till the time of the Gentiles is complete as well. See, there's a set point 
in time that Zion would be left desolate. And Weirfinster discover that. Okay, where do I want to start? Let's start right here. Now therefore and understand, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. This during the times of the Babylon Medes and the in the Persians in the Greek time and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off this is during the Roman time when Messiah came he walked lived his life did everything he's supposed to do and then he died on that tree he was cut off but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary this is the time of 70 AD the people of the prince the sons of darkness, which is the uh, Greeks and the Romans and Esau together, and Moab. But, of course, Moab. Moab probably was with them when, at this destruction. But anyway, we know the Greeks and the Romans and the surrounding areas was always constantly attacking us. The people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. 70 AD. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. So the desolations were determined after the war. That's when them curses came upon us. We were taken captive and put into slavery in all nations, countries. But Let's read on. And he shall confirm the covenant. So it went back to Hamashiach. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Which he did during that week. And in the middle of the week. Which was the Passover. He shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. When he died. The temple. The veil of the temple rent in two. So they no longer had to sprinkle the blood. On the veil. For an atonement for sins brothers and sisters he became the final atonement for sins right here and for the overspreading of abominations because they continued in sin even after that he shall make it desolate this is when 70 AD occurred so it's, a, it's another explanation of what happened here even until the consummation go look at the word consummation our land will remain desolate of us even until the consummation, the wedding, until Hamashiach cracked the sky to the end of the time of the Gentiles. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. What was poured upon us? The curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28. That was determined way before, in the beginning. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate even upon our land it was poured upon the judgment was poured upon our land and the judgment was poured upon the people that lived in the land us y'all see what I'm saying now you're not going to know the day or hour we don't know because they changed the calendar so we don't know what year it is we don't know what year it is so I suggest y'all stop trying to figure out when is the 400 years up and um, concentrate on um, the Messiah and walking in holiness and righteousness and purging out and getting yourself prepared for this for the wedding of the Lamb. If you don't believe in the wedding of the Lamb then nothing I can tell you. All I can say is uh, read some more, study some more, go before them more, fast and pray more, do more vows, brothers and sisters. Take this information, add it to your notes, bring before the Most High. If you can't see it, you don't understand it, 
Um, write this stuff down, man, and, and just read it, read it, and continue to read until you understand. It will come, the understanding will come. Just as much as he showed me, he'll show you the same things. Now, let me tell y'all, the heathens, the way they explain it, that's what I be telling y'all. Y'all need to come all the way away from churchianity. They explain this as if how, as Hashatan making a covenant with many for seven years. And then in the middle of that covenant, you see how backwards they are in their prophesying? How in the world are they going to get it right in a, me in a mixed up, messed up, 30% of the time religion? Of course they're going to tell you lies and deception and the same thing is happening in this Hebrew awakening. They're explaining this as if it was Hashatan making a covenant with many for one week. In the middle he's going to break that covenant. They're waiting for the temple to be built. They're waiting for these wicked. You think the Most High is going to allow the wicked heathens to build his temple and start doing some sacrificing and causing it to cease? We This has already happened. Because your lack of faith and black, lack of trust in, in what has already taken place and believing in wicked men, you can't see these things. But his elect can. The elect to the elect the books was open to to understand. Some of y'all only gonna make it seventy five percent of the way and the rest is you are done. The most high not gonna allow a lot of you to not a lot of you not to understand this stuff. He's gonna allow this to happen because you are wicked in some type of way. I got people feeding me doctrine without even understanding nothing. And they won't stop. If you tell them to stop, they continue to try. And they keep sending stuff. I can't deal with wickedness like that, man. That's why it's only me over here. Everybody else is shortchanging themselves. They don't want to give up this sin, that sin. They don't want to give up this place or that person that they hang with. They don't want to give up the weed or the drinking and getting drunk. It's something that they don't want to give up that I can't be around them because the little times that I am around it, it does have an influence. There was a Hebrew that moved in right next to me, man. I told him, man, come on up and fellowship with me, man. I'm, I'm real about this walk, man. He had his little mitre on top of his head and everything. He didn't have the fringes on, though, but he at least had that turbine-like on. Because when I seen him, I asked him about that. They said, hey, man, you, you, you a Hebrew or Muslim? Then he said Hebrew. <laughs> and we talked a few times. But when I wanted him to come up, he didn't want to come up. You know why? Because he still was getting high. He still smoked, was smoking weed. And some of these Hebrews on there is trying to convince us that smoking weed is uh, a weed. It's a weed. That smoking weed is righteous. It's, it's of the most high to do. Oh, it's of the earth. It's made of the earth so we could smoke it. Well, there's a lot of things made of the earth that the Most High has put a abomination stamp on that we can't take part of and, 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 and eat. But weed is a weed. Think about that. We try to kill weeds. Weeds choke out 
good plants. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Weeds choke out good plants. That's what a weed does. That's what a tear does in the wheat fields. Or it pretends to be an imitation of something. Something good to eat. It's an imitation of something good. Y'all get what I'm saying? So we got these hindrances. And not that I'm sitting over here. Mr. Holy Man. Perfect Man. Y'all know I'm not. But I'm striving for that. And I really want it with all my heart, mind, and soul. Though I trip and stumble here and there. Though I make an error here and there. But I confess daily. And I confess these things. According to the prescription that the Most High wrote for us to do. We must do these things on a daily basis. You have to confess. What you gonna wait for tomorrow for? Tomorrow ain't promised. You better wake up when you go to, be go to bed tonight. Today has its own problems to deal with. Deal with what you can today while it's day. Because once the night hits and you lay your head down to sleep and you lay your head down with wrath in your heart, with unrepented sins on your mind and your heart, with um, hating your brother or sister in your heart, without helping your brother and sister where you could have on your heart, you lay your head down. You may not wake up in the morning and you done died in a sin because it's that sin to you to turn on your brothers like that and your sisters and to not make right what, what could have been made right right then and there. Now, if you didn't know, the Most High may have you live another day so that he can tell you, hey, go make up. Then you make up. Then at night, you pass away. You, you're clean the next day. You're clean. See what I'm saying? If you're destined to be saved, he'll do things like that. To make sure you make it before you die. You'll make everything right. You'll prepare your family, yourselves. He'll tell you it's, it's time. You'll know when it's time. You'll just, it'll be in you to know. Not just a feeling. You'll, you'll, you will know it and you'll make arrangements. You'll let everybody know. But with that, I'm going to say, Shalom, brothers and sisters. I pray that y'all awakening is going as, as um, skilled and crafted as mine is going by the Most High. Because he's doing things that I would have never thought of that he would do. He's opening my eyes in ways I would never thought that he could open my eyes. He's digging down into the psychological state of my mind and emotional state. He's detaching hands that's grabbed on to an area in my mind that's been fused with the air in my mind. And he's operating as a skilled surgeon, loosening one finger at a time. Because he, he, he don't want to just strip it loose. He'll, he'll, he'll make you crazy with He'll, he'll destroy the brain. So as a skilled surgeon, he's taking one slice at a time. And that, those fingers are loosened. Those fingers are loosened. But now he got to work on the palm. He's digging around the palms. So he won't damage the brain tissue. And over a period of time, that whole palm's going to be out. And most high going to take that thing and chunk it into the lake of fire. So... If you're going through something that you just seem to can't get rid of or stop, have the patience. Know that he's going to be working with you and working on you. And wait and confess daily and keep going. Keep moving forward. Don't just give up because you're not healed. Don't just give up because you're not. That birth defect ain't going to be fixed or can't be fixed. The Most High will fix it. At the coming of Hamashiach. When he get there. Because the scriptures say. we, The old man will leap as a heart. The lame man will leap as a heart. That means he. Is bedridden. And when Hamashiach returns. He will no longer be bedridden. He will leap up. Like that one man Paul. No. 
was it Peter or Paul? I think it was Paul. Paul healed a lame man, told him to take up his bed and, and walk, just like Hamashiach did with that other one. And uh, he took up his bed and he walked. And they charged him because he was carrying his bed on the Sabbath. And he was brought before, you know, the, uh, well, before this video get too long, y'all understand what I'm saying. Let me shut that part off. Y'all understand what I'm saying. So with that, I'm just going to close this out and say Shalom. Y'all connect with the Most High. You build your own relationship with Him. Do what you got to do to keep yourself in the body. Prepare for the fiery darts through the reading and application of this word. And wait on, wait on them. And stick with your brothers and sisters, y'all. Long suffer with some of them out there that need you. Don't turn no one away. They need you give. Give. They might just need you to uh, talk with them. Give of your time. They might need consoling or, or somebody passed away in their life. And they need somebody to reach out and talk with them. You can be the mouth. You're supposed to be the mouthpiece of the Most High. You're supposed to be his arms and hands on the earth. Zion, what you doing, man? This is an update bonus, brothers and sisters. Since I don't know how long I'm going to be back, um, I'm going to show you something else that I've learned during my purge out, which the most eyes were veiling many things during this purge out. And here's one of them. Right here it says, and the serpent cast out of his mouth. This is Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now, what does this mean, Zion? The answer is in Wisdom of Solomon, believe it or not. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verses uh, 15 through 17. It says, But thy hand, it is not possible to escape. For unrighteous men, refusing to know thee, were scourged in the strength of thine arm, pursued with strange rains, and hails and showers inex inexhaust inexorable and utterly consumed with fire for what was most marvelous of all in the water which quencheth all things the fire wrought yet more mightily for the world fighteth for the righteous now see this here the world is fighting for the righteous. When I read that, the spirit was like, wait a minute. No, no, my spirit was like, wait a minute. When the spirit pointed me flat, you know, it just reminded me of the earth helping the woman. Then I went quickly to this and I read it and there was the answer. The earth is helping the righteous, y'all. Who is the woman? Yasharal. Who is the saints? Yasharal. And the household of Yasharal is included in that figure, y'all. 
and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood. This is the people, the flood of people that that's out to get us. And the earth is attacking the beast. Y'all remember the the sons of darkness doctrine that I showed the sons of light, sons of darkness, the war with the uh with the sons of light versus the sons of darkness and it makes a list of who's actually been fighting against us which is most of the countries and around the world that we've been scattered into but these answers are unfolding brothers and sisters and it truly is here a little there a little so when this was said for the world fighting for the righteous and it explains how the world is ex is fighting for us by you know through the most highs hand of course producing these strange rains you know strange um hails around the world super storms you know we know that some of them is responsible for that because the most High also said he created the smith that blow up the coals look that up google that the most High created the smith that blow up the coals you know when you already got a fire, you blow the coal, you make it hotter, right? That's what they're doing. You already got storms coming, tornadoes coming. They're making it hotter. They're making it worser. Y'all see what I'm saying? The Most High created the smith that blew up the coals. So the earth is helping the righteous the earth is helping the woman is swallowing up this flood of people that the dragon has cast out of his mouth after us after the seed the remnant of the seed So y'all think about that for a moment. Bring before the Most High. Talk with him about it. And let me know what y'all think about this. Is this wrong? Is it right? It Could he be right? I do think so. I trust in what the Most High has revealed to me while I was reading and there's so much more that will fill in these gaps which you can't understand up in here that's being revealed to the elect brothers and sisters and as y'all know I'm always here to help and share what the Most High has shared with me but if you see any error in that please speak up let me know uh I'm open to hear whatever y'all do have to say because this is a question that I am asking you about this what I just revealed to you that it, I may have some more witnesses that see this same thing as I see and if you don't see it uh, I'm pretty sure they might have some other witnesses that would team up with you and say hey I don't see what you're seeing here but if you know the scriptures, you know that the woman, Yashara, is the righteous. The woman spoken of in the scriptures. And the saints. But it's not just Yashara, it's the house of Yashara, the household. Just as Abraham's household was included in the covenant where the Most High himself told Abraham to circumcise Ishmael and all the male servants in your house. All of them. His, him and his household took part of the covenant. Just as well with Moses, and I spoke this, this, these same things before, the household of Moses, which I got to realize is that 
from the Abraham's household to Isaac's household to Jacob's household, they've always had servants. Those servants was passed down to Isaac, to then to Jacob, and then to the twelve tribes. Even in the land of Goshen, they was were monk they was amongst us. They was there. When Moses took us, well, the Most High took us out through the hand of Moses, there was a mixed multitude that joined with us, which gives you the understanding of whether you're free or bond. Y'all see that now? Whether free or bond, you can be joined onto the Most High. All this was a foreshadow in the past, being seen today. And in the future, we're going to see greater things that was revealed to us in the past. So, even the household that Moses had in uh, the 12 tribes, when they came out, they had servants. But they also had free people that believed and came out with them. And they bared witness to everything. They took part in the covenant as well. As the blood was sprinkled on all the people, it was also people from other nations that joined themselves to us. There was always a joining together with the house of Yasharal. That's why I say it's very important y'all understand what is the house of Yasharal, but you got to go back to Abraham to get the fuller understanding of the household of Abraham passed down. Foreshadows of things that happened with Abraham's household happened all the way through until present. And even when Hamashiach returned, a foreshadow of Abraham's household, Moses and the twelve tribes household is going to be seen when Hamashiach come and gather and put the two sticks together in his hand. And we're going to have a mighty household, all going to serve the will of the Father in righteousness. All of them. But the ones on the outside of our land is the one that's going to get the curses because they refuse the truth. But they was just left over. They're the remnant of the Gentiles left over after all the destruction. Of course they're going to get the curses and everything put upon them. The most I said was going to come upon them. But the household of Yahshua are going to be done. It's going to be complete. That's a wrap for the household of Yahshua. The household includes the servants and the handmaids. They also will have the covenant put in their hearts and minds to do them. Because the Most High is not going to bring some little silly heathen up in your household trying to play white supremacists and hating you, spitting in your coffee and your drink. You think he's going to bring that type up in your household to serve you, to live with you, to watch your children, to pick your crops? No, he's going to bring a thankful, grateful Servant, willing to serve the Most High's will for their life while they're serving us. And it's going to be a joyous occasion. I remember there was a brother subbed to me, went off on me about this subject because he had no understanding. Too busy listening to GMS and their dogmatic lies and deception and having no understanding. And I tried to explain a little bit and it kept going off. Then I said, okay, I'm going to make a couple of videos explaining some of this to you. I don't know if he saw the videos. I sent it to him and never heard from him again. Because he's taken by whatever that Hebrew religion group, GMS, wants to call themselves. He was taken by that. Deceived out of his mind, y'all. But there's a lot of Hebrews like that. So you got the household of Yasharal. Is a great household. It's not just the 12 tribes. It includes our servants. The Most High knows how to give you a good servant. Just as he knows how to pick his good servants. That's going to serve him in the kingdom. When we are brought back to our place in our position. So, when it says the earth is helping the righteous, it's not just us. It's those he's preparing for us. He's helping them too. And there's a lot of Hebrews being misled. 
All right. With that said, this is the end of this edition to the word. Uh, I mean, to this video. <laughs> so I pray that y'all um, let me know about it in the comment section below. If you think you're wrong, that's you can put it down below or just be respectful about it. And uh, tell me why you think I'm wrong. And if you think it's right. And it's a revelation. Say hallelujah. Alright brothers and sisters. I'll see y'all when I return. Who knows how long it's going to be. Shalom.